So we pulled up on the campus and parked, and as we were walking, even outside, you would see groups of students just praying, just one with another, just praying, mm. and really just, it was a spiritual moment. You could sense the tangible presence of God on the campus. So we walked up to Hughes Auditorium, walked through the doors, and there were hundreds of people just worshiping Jesus. There didn't seem to be any order. There didn't seem to be any real leadership uh, guiding it. Um, but they were just worshiping. So we went up on the balcony. And um, if you're like me, I'm the kind of person that I just like to observe for a bit. So I'm up in the balcony just watching. And our original plan was to be there for about an hour and a half, then go get some lunch, come back for the evening time. But I got so captivated by just the raw, passionate worship mm. that we ended up staying in that auditorium for eight hours. And it was like wave after wave of God's love, of God's peace, of his tangible presence was just flooding over me. I was in tears almost all day because it seemed so authentic. It seemed so pure. There was no organization, and yet it was completely organized by the Holy Spirit. And it was just students just worshiping Jesus, praying, confession, testimony time. There's no flash, but it's just truly a sovereign move of the Holy Spirit. And so that's why they keep saying it's so unique and different than things of the past because it's truly happening amongst the nameless, faceless generations. It's, it's beautiful, isn't it? Yeah, it, it is. Just, it's just a beautiful, genuine move of the Spirit. Amen. Um, you know, as, as much as uh, you've talked about uh, other outpourings that you've been a part of, we've researched and studied many outpourings over the years. Uh, so it is unique in some sense, but there are some consistent things that happen yeah. with revival, with awakenings, with outpourings of the Spirit that happen. What would you say some of, the, some of the fruit of these things really is over the, over the years? Yeah, so at the forefront of what's happening there at Asbury, obviously there's the worship and prayer that's been going 24-7, day and night, which is so incredible. But that's something you see consistently in revivals and awakenings. There's usually a time of uh, intense confession and repentance. There's a desire amongst the people that are present to just... Um, really surrender their life to the Lordship of Jesus and walk in holiness. This is the big theme of most awakenings and revival. It's just a desire for holiness mm -hmm. in a new, profound way. And so those are some markers you see throughout a lot of the awakenings. But another one that I think is important is um, the diversity amongst ethnic, ethnic cultural groups that are present in most awakenings and revivals. And you see this in history. Uh, when these have happened. Um, and I think it's directly connected to Acts 2, that the nations of the earth Amen. came to Jerusalem. And the real miracle of Acts 2 isn't necessarily just that they were speaking in tongues. It was that the nations of the earth were hearing the good news of Jesus and the proclamation of, the, of God in their own native language. And you see that consistency amongst revivals. And so that's happening there at Asbury, is much of the worship is being led by uh, different ethnic diverse groups and sometimes here in the GTA, we may not think much of that, but I know having pastored in the U.S. for 20 years, that's big. That's a huge thing. And so God has a way of unifying his people in the midst of their unique diversity. And I think that's a key component in awakening revival as well. Yeah, amen. Just as you're talking there, I'm, you know, the Lord's reminding me of the prayer of Jesus in John 17. Mm, we'd be one. When Jesus yeah. prayed. Yeah that father that they will be one he's yeah. praying for you and me for all of us yeah god that they would be one as you and i are one mm. then the world will believe yes that i am who i i say i am i believe right. that you sent me so uh, yeah. that unity marker and it's a marker of heaven it, we have that's that right. reflection in in revelation and everybody coming together that's and that, right that's a beautiful example of what this should be but, yeah. talk to me for a minute tim about uh, what our response should be here in Canada yeah uh, as we think about you know this is this is happening in Wilmore Kentucky it's sounding like it's spreading to other other places mm. um, but what's our response what, what should we do as individuals when something like this breaks out yeah yeah Kevin that's what I've been thinking about a lot over the past week um, the great revivalist G Campbell Morgan he preached for many years at Westminster Chapel said you can't and I'm paraphrasing this, but you can't organize revival. When the wind of, the, wind of God starts to blow, you can simply put up your sails and catch what he's doing. Mm. And so in my own heart, I've been praying that a lot. Lord, what are the sails that I need to put up to catch what are you, you are doing in this moment? 
And two things have come to my mind that I think are obviously for me and my life and my leadership, but also I think for us in Canada. We put up the whale, uh, the whale, the sail of hunger, and we put up the sail of humility. Um, when things like this start to happen, we should put up that sail of, Lord, we desire to experience you mm. in a fresh way like we've never experienced before. There's a hunger that rises up, and we don't understand everything that you're doing, but we're open to it. And then that humility is, I'm going to trust you with what you're doing. Because awakening often kind of disrupts our programs, disrupts our right. agendas, disrupts what's happening in society and culture. And it takes a humility for us to posture our hearts to say, we put aside everything else and we surrender to what you are doing this moment. And so I say for us, even here in Canada, just recognize the moment that we're in. The wind of the spirit is blowing. Mm -hmm. Let it increase hunger in our hearts and let us humble ourselves to say, we're open to whatever you have for us. What does it say to your heart about hope, hope for the next generation? Yeah. Talk to us a little about that. You and I were talking last week a bit about how when you study revivals and awakenings historically, especially in Western culture, they tend to happen at times where it feels like society has become derailed. Culture has gone a certain way. Sometimes even the culture of the church has gotten derailed or off course. And there's this, this moment that happens where people recognize we're so off. What's going to bring transformation to us and to our communities and maybe just our families? And that's usually the birthplace of revival is where God says, okay, you recognize that and you have nowhere to turn but me. I'm going to show up and awaken you and awaken my people and do a work that's beyond anything man can take credit for. And so for us here in Canada, I think that's incredible because you can look at all the challenges that exist in our own country and just certain things that are happening amongst the younger generation. This has been coined a revival of peace mm -hmm. amongst a generation that's riddled by anxiety exactly. and fear and depression. Right. And that sense of peace is so present there in Hughes Auditorium. And so I just, it excites me to believe that in the midst of the days we're living in, with all the challenges, with all the difficulties, uh, God is about to awaken this church and do something so supernatural Amen. that no man can take credit for and he's going to move and bring about true transformation in the hearts of his Amen. people. Amen. Preach it, brother. <laughs> I get a little excited around Amen. this. Yeah, Me so. too. I mean, yeah. that's, that's our heart's cry. Amen. That's what we need in our nation. That's what we believe. God is at work. Yes. God is at work. Just open your heart to him. Continue to pray. Pray for this next generation. Pray that we'll be open to the move of the Spirit in our own hearts and our lives. So thankful, Tim, for your leadership and your friendship and for being with us today. My privilege. Uh, may God continue to pour out in our hearts Amen. as leaders and in the hearts of people that we, uh, we lead and minister to.